What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the PB101 University podcast. We have Hans, Tyler, the crew here. No special guest, but special guest, which is us. So today, let's talk about it, you guys. Uh, travel. This is something I, I get asked all the time. Like, how do you charge for the rental? What are you doing? Are you charging per mile? And um, what I thought was interesting is all three of us have different ways to do it. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's what I love about this business. What works for me is what I do. What works best for you and you. So, so Tyler, if you don't, uh, don't mind starting it off, man, like what are you charging and like, how are you structuring it? Yeah, man. So I go, you know, New Jersey's not too big, you know, honestly to get back and forth from the bottom to the top of New Jersey is about maybe two and a half, maybe three hours if you're looking at traffic. Uh, so what I do is I go by dollar per mile. I always charge a dollar per mile. I do give 25 mile radius for free. I don't charge for 25 miles. I, you know, that's around my area from where I live in my town to maybe four or five towns over. I'll give that like radius for free. But then after 25 miles, let's say it's a 30 mile hike. I have to start charging. So I'll charge like a dollar per mile. You know, it might sound silly if, if it's 30 miles and I'm charging a dollar, you know, and I'm only getting $5 for travel or something like that. But listen, man, gas adds up. So, you know, I have to do something. So most, most of the time I really put in the work when I'm getting like people who want me and they're like 50 miles. So I'm getting, I'm already charging $25 boom per mile right there for all those miles. So hmm. they help. Cool. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Um, because right. I do, I do drop offs and I, I don't, I know you do drop offs too. You, at least you, you've done a couple. Um, do you charge, like, say I want to drop off 40 miles away. Are you going to charge me twice? Or are you just going to charge me once? Yeah back and forth so if i do a drop off and mm -hmm. i have to charge you the 25 dollars, and then i have to go back home that's that's again 25 dollars, and then back and then forth so it's a it's a it's a round trip you know what i mean back and forth so at mm -hmm. the end of the day like what 100 dollars just travel alone but people over here pay it man it's nothing no one complains about plus there's nothing you really announce like oh i'm charging you 100 dollars for travel you know mm -hmm. you just put it you just put it in your invoice you know that's how i do it. i just put it in my invoice Okay, I do the math. I look at my cal you know, calculate the miles. Boom. If if I'm charging four hundred for the event, I'll just charge five. Well, Boom. what happens if it's uh, an odd number, and that brings your like your total to like, let's just say four thirty three, where it's just a really weird number. Like, isn't that a red flag? Or do you round it up? Or I just usually round. I usually round it up. I never end up at like four thirty three or anything like that. I usually, if I'm like. I have my, you know, I have my three ninety nine all day rental for the photo booth, and then I don't know. Let's say I charge. I get what you're saying. If like, let's say it's like four, like, for, with the miles. Like, let's say you said four thirty three or something like that, right? So, I would just maybe put it at like four thirty five, mm. just just to make it look a little like nice. So, okay, this is it's gonna be four thirty five all day rental, and then I'll tell them like that includes the breakdown, the de delivery. You know, I will mention delivery. I meant the breakdown, delivery, setup. You know, obviously the photo booth and stuff like that. And then people kind of in their minds, like, okay, yeah, you're charging me basically for, you know, to drop it off, to set it up. And, you know, I think that's where their mind goes. We're like, okay, the extra $35, whatever. That makes sense. It's not like an itemized breakdown. It's just a, this is everything included. I get in, in my case, I would understand what you're saying. Oh, dang, 433, that kind of sounds like an odd number. So I get what you're saying. Most of the time I'll just round it off. Like, okay, I'll just charge like 435. Or if it's 447, I'll just charge 450. Yeah. You know, are, I mean, okay. are you also strict on this too? Four, four. What, what if someone's event is 26 miles? Is it like, is, are you just like, no, my no. rules are my rules. I'm not going to ask for a dollar, man. Usually I'm usually once I hit like 30, 30, 35 miles, that's when I'll start putting in, you know, something for travel. You know, I'll put like $25 in or something like that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What about you, Hans, man? What, uh, I know, I mean, I know you're about to drop some gems here because we chatted about it the other day. Um, how, how are you charging, how are you charging, man? I charge by area, man. Um, if you guys know LA, LA is huge. So whoever is not near LA, LA has its like outskirts where like if you're living in the outskirts, which is where I live, I live in the San Fernando Valley area. Um, I'm kind of like outside of the whole traffic area. So shooting up north from my area is super easy. Shooting up east, easy. Shooting up west towards Simi Valley, easy. Shooting up south towards like downtown LA is freaking hell, dude. I mean, I could shoot up 30 miles up north um, from my area, and 30 miles would probably take me 30 minutes, all right? If I try to shoot up 30 miles south, 
from my area, 30 minutes is going to take me like two hours, probably longer. It, 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 it's horrible. So the way I structure it is um, on Google Maps, you could actually build a, a map that you could bubble and like gray out areas and like make it part of your a map. And uh, I integrate it into my website. And I always tell the customer, like, hey, like, if you have questions about delivery, because I have gotten questions like, oh, I'm all the way in, like, whatever area, you know, I know it's far from where you are. I was like, look, go on my and I send them a direct link, like, just go on this part of my website and then check check your address. If you don't want to give me your address right away, because sometimes they're like, oh, I'm still shopping around. No, that's fine. Um, I was like, check check my map. If you if your area lands in my grayed out map, like that means that you, you're good, like you're not paying delivery. Anything outside of this, you're paying. And I tell them like, there's no what ifs or buts. Like, oh, I'm just two miles away. Like, that's that's too bad. Like, if you if you want to book with me, cool. If you're not, I understand. Like, I don't make exceptions, even if they're like a mile away. And and what what's uh what's interesting for me is if even if they're a mile away and they fall off, I start charging the mileage from where I'm driving. So I'm not I'm not like say say Tyler, you know, he says like, oh, I'm like it's like 26 miles, but he does a 25 mile radius and he'll charge a dollar. Like, nah, you start getting charged from like where when I start driving. So my bubble is roughly about 10 or 15 miles, depending on which way it goes. And say you're like five miles away from the bubble, which is like, say, 20 miles, then you're getting charged those 20 miles. You're not getting charged five miles um, just because it, it, it makes a big difference for me, especially for drop us when I have to go back and forth, back and forth. Like, nah, no. So um, check it out. Um, Google Maps does have a map that you can build and you can put it on your website. And it's a lot easier for me to just tell customers. And I've legit had customers call me and be like, oh, I saw your map. I qualify for free delivery. I I, I want to book with you because you're not going to charge me. I'm like, sweet. And I, I guess it makes my my website look a little bit, you know, a little better because I have that integrated into my maps and um, something to think about. Do you but like like you said, you said that in California, 30 miles could take you up to two hours, depending on what what area you go to. In New Jersey, it's a lot different. 30 miles, that's about what I do to get to my regular nine to five job. So for me, that's like maybe half an hour, 25 minutes, if anything. So you know, bad. I'm jealous. Like if, I, if, I were to, if I were to drive where I live to Atlantic City, you know, most a lot of people know where Atlantic City is at. It's all the way down to the bottom of New Jersey. It's basically mini Vegas. That's about maybe like a an hour and a half drive for me. And that's about like 71 miles. Hmm. Damn. So. Yeah. Well, Hans, I was, I was going to ask, do you do the same for the bull, the rental for the bulls? Yeah, but I charge more for the, the for ga gas is more expensive too, right? Because now I got to take my box truck or I got to, I got to take my tow dolly with my truck. Ah, okay. I knew, yeah. I, I was like, I was pretty sure. Cause I, you guys got, I filled up today. Gas is like five, over five bucks out in California yeah. in, in LA. Yeah. And there's, some, there's some spots, some spots where you got, you're going to be paying like, Five five fifty per gallon. Like, so it's in Beverly Hills area, which of course Beverly Hills, but like Beverly Hills in like that uh, West Hollywood area, dude. They're like five seventy five, five eighty right now. It's we're ridiculous. at three. We're at three forty seven. Shut up, oh, bragger. <laughs> and we just raised the prices. We were at three twenty seven like yesterday. That's crazy. Dang. Okay, so for me, we uh for my rental companies, we do we do time. We're not charging per mile. Um, just because we do volume, it's not unusual for us to have more than one, more than two, more than three events on a day. So if, because exactly, I'm in the same area, kind of where Hans is. And um, there's been times where it's 10 miles away, but it it literally will take over an hour just because of where it's at. That's cert certain days of the week, you know? Um, and then, um, so, but we're, we're doing a 75 minimum delivery and setup fee. I don't care if you're down the street. Um, I don't actually just call it setup and delivery. I always say setup, deliver, I'm sorry, delivery, setup, and breakdown. I'm include I'm including the word setup and breakdown. So they don't just feel like I'm charging them to me to bring the equipment. I'm also impl implementing or implying that it's also the setup and breakdown time. I also, I also say pickup. Yeah. Do yeah. You, do you guys, have, do you guys have tolls over there as well? There's yeah. In Orange County, maybe, but yeah. like, not really. Like, I mean, we have. A thing called like a like express lane or like uh it's like a carpool lane but they charge you for it oh, i'm glad you brought that up tyler you have to be careful too you guys if you're using um i think it's google maps uh you have to make sure when you're setting your uh your map sometimes in some areas in like la 
or in Orange County, it'll actually get, guide you to where you want to go, but it will also put you on the toll road. So you have to make sure you have that function off. Yeah, I, it, it's happened to me before where I, I went to some place in deep in Orange County and um, I, I put it in my maps and I ended up on a toll road and I had to pay like 15 bucks, mm. which was annoying. You know, I'm like, you know, it was back in the day I was charging 199 for the rentals right long time ago. So like that $15 was a lot I'm talking like seven and a half percent of what I was making. But but yeah, so we'll start it off I, uh, for us. It's uh, 45. No, 30 minutes is included. And then every 15 minutes, we're adding $15. But okay. that's that's just what I'm, I'm not charging them each each way. I'm just charging them one way, if that makes sense. So if it's a drop off, are you going to charge that twice? No, no, we okay. don't. Yeah. But again, most of the time when we're doing drop offs, I'm not just dropping one off and then going home. We're doing one, then another. So it's to me, it's not to me, it doesn't make sense. And it's not really fair for the customer to say, hey, I'm going home and then coming back because most of the time we're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then. um, But yeah, I, I, I personally won't go anything over an hour for like distance because that could really screw up the flow of the pickups and drop offs. Um, But yeah, I mean, this is the stuff that people, you know, need to hear because I, I see way too many photo booth owners, you guys, you know, especially starting off, like not charging anything for delivery some people willing to drive like two two and a half hours to do an event not knowing yeah. that's a that's twice that's twice for most people um definitely i don't know what do you guys have to say like what's your advice to those that that are just offering you know free delivery and you know what would you tell them like i would def- i started noticing i started uh, like saving my receipts my gas receipts and then that's when i was like yo this is adding up quick so mm-hmm. if you guys do offer free delivery, check your receipts, keep them with you, man. And then you're going to you're going to be able to tell, like, before you start your photo booth business and after you start your photo booth business and you're looking at the gas receipt, you're going to notice, like, maybe I should start, like, charging. Because it's not only gas, dude. It's your time and wear and tear. So just something. I, I, I don't know. I, I, would, I put it like this. These are this is extra money for you for your gas for the week. Like, if you're doing this as a weekend gig, you know, as you're, you know just like your side hustle. Cause a lot of people do do the photo booth business as a side gig. And you know, you charge that extra $40 for travel or whatever like that. You know, you could throw that in your gas tank at the end of the week. I mean, at the end of the night after your event and guess what, if you're just working your nine to five during the week and you're not traveling too far for your nine to five, you have gas for your car for the whole week. And then come the following Saturday, you have another event. You just keep on doing it. So basically you kind of like have a bill out of your life because of your photo booth business in a way, if you, if you put it like that in that perspective, you know, but for me, the advice I would give to someone who's not charging delivery, um, make sure your prices are firm then. Like, you know, your prices are at, at a high standard, at least so it could somewhat cover the cost of your travel in a way. So, you know, like for us, you know, I do three ninety nine all day rental. Drew mentioned he's used to do one ninety nine all day rental. I don't I think what you're at like two ninety nine all day rental now or three ninety nine. Mm-hmm. That yeah, not including the uh, delivery and setup. It, it, for someone who's not charging delivery, it wouldn't be worth it because you know two ninety nine. Then you said you're paying all your gas, your travel, your tolls. You're ta- they're taking like ten percent out of their pay just to get to the event and back. So I would say make sure your prices are firm and hey, if you have to charge five hundred, charge five hundred. But at least that five hundred will be worth the travel. You know, man, I I'm so proud of you both. The mentors, you guys have like, man, you guys spit gems every single time now. Like you guys, man, really, really proud of you both. Like those are all, exa- it's literally exactly what I was going to say. And to, to piggyback off what Han said, there's some apps. I don't know off the top of my head, but there are some apps that you could literally download on your phone and then press start when you drive and then stop. You can even link it up to some of your cars where it basically like, calculates the driving um also the time too i i I think uh i found this out when i was um considering doing some ubering for hustle with drew to to just just show like how much can the uber driver make in the year 2024 but um that didn't fall through uh but also too like tracking the miles and all that like like again guys tax season comes you want to be able to to say i drove x amount of miles you can write not just off the gas you can write off things like brakes um tire repairs or any maintenance on your car so yeah, um absolutely yeah new jersey we get 60 cents per mile uh that yeah we get 60 cents per mile they give back 
in tax, like a, uh, I guess tax rebate. How do they say like a refund? Like, you know, okay. the write offs, the tax write off. So they, they yeah, give okay. you 60 cents per mile. Uh, yeah. Oh, over two, here. two. I'm, I'm glad I, uh, I remember this. I get a lot of pe customers too, for my rental business asking for discounts when they know that their event is, um, not on a Saturday. I don't know if you guys have ever ran into that. They're like, oh, my event's on Wednesday. Is there any discount? I explained to them, I was like, look, honestly, we should be charging you more because if I'm coming, if I'm trying to drive to your event during the week in LA, I'm guaranteed hitting traffic. It doesn't matter where I'm going, south, north, west, there is automatically going to be traffic. And uh, I've learned that the hard way. It took me like a few times for that to get into my head, right? Because I hear Wednesday event, a light bulb and a bunch of money sounds and money dollar bills start flashing in front of my eyes. But <laughs> look, if, if I have to drive, if it's a 40, 45 minute drive, no traffic on a Wednesday guaranteed, it's going to take me an hour and a half to two hours to get there. Man. And I'm not even, I'm not even in LA. I'm in LA County. Like if you're on the 10 freeway or the 60 freeway or the 210, anytime during, like, honestly, even like three o'clock all the way up to like seven 30 guaranteed traffic. So and also uh, another thing, most, again, like I piggybacked off what I said, majority of photo booth owners have nine to fives during the week. So for you saying, you know, that Wednesday event, that might actually also consider someone actually having to take off of their real job to do that event. Because again, they see the money signs. They see, oh, I can make more at this one event than I will at my nine to five job. Yeah. Okay. They could probably get a sick day and get paid for it. But still, they have to take off, which means they're taking off of their, you know, their weekly routine just to go to your event. So I would say charge more during the week because, yeah, you could give that weekday discount or something like that. But, you know, you're you're more busier during the week than you are on a weekend. You know what I mean? So I, I agree I'm with that. All right. So cool. Let's shift. Let's shift the conversation here um, in the Photo Booth 101 mentor group chat. There was uh, one of the um, I think it's Dapo, right? Um, long story short. Dapo, uh, hopefully I'm not butchering his name, um, said that there was a venue that was basically, I don't, he basically reached out to the venue, wanted to become the preferred vendor. The venue said it's going to cost you $50 a month to be um, our vendor for the venue. They also claimed that there's like a hundred, they get a hundred leads per day, but it's $50 to be uh, the preferred vendor. And um I think a lot of people were probably su surprised that we, we we had the stance that we had, but I'll go ahead and let Hans like, what do you what what's your take on that, man? Oh uh, man, as soon as as soon as he told me, and obviously we're not going to name the business, but he did uh, as his advice. So the first thing I did was just look at the business and it started reading reviews. And the first thing I go to, which normally everybody does, you, me, Tyler, is look at the bad reviews. What why why do people hate them? And then one of the reviews said that. Um, they the the lady was mad because they forced their vendors and if they don't take vendors from their preferred vendors list then they charge them more a hundred dollars an hour more so for me that was like oh well at least they're trying to push their vendors so uh, you know i screenshotted that highlighted it and i sent it back to him i was like have you looked at this and he's like no i haven't i was like well do your research because i mean it might be worth it for you it sucks for the customer that's booking there but it might be a good thing for you but the the red the big red flag that that uh that I saw was that they wanted a commitment, and yeah. they wanted to sign like a contract of three at least three months. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a Yelp scam, and I I I hate Yelp. <laughs> so Damn. I was like, no. I told them I was like, no, dude. Tell them like, I I advised them. I was like, look, I probably wouldn't do it, but if I did do it, and if you're curious, because it might be legit, and you don't know, um. Tell them like, you know, you could only commit to one month if they're legit and they, they won't have a problem with that. You know, I also, I, I did tell him to the side, like I messaged him privately because he actually screenshot that showed me too. I don't know if he messaged you guys on the side because um, I put in there in the chat and I told him, I said, I don't know. To me, that sounds like a scam. Um, he told me basically, he's like, you know, is this real? And I was like, I, I don't know, man. I don't I don't think I would try it. Like, I really don't think I would like, you know, try that out. It's yeah. something that I can't trust. But then again, if it's a three month commitment, $150 and it is real and they're really considering giving him all those leads. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a very complex situation. Like that, that 150 could turn into $10,000 in three months. If he really, you know, if it was legit, but you know, 
Yeah. I don't know. Well, what got me is th- that they're reading it. They really seem like they were really trying to pitch him and selling him really hard. And one of the things that caught my eye is the venue said, we get a hundred leads people every single day, a hundred leads of people wanting to, to have uh, inquiring about having their event at that venue. And if you do the math, you guys, a hundred leads per day, that means they should at least one to two bookings every single day. That means what they have at least one to two events per day. If we're doing the math correctly to me, just thinking about it, if I have a venue and we are booked every single day, I am not going to try to tax vendors $50 a month. Yeah. Cause those venues, be concerned. Those just think about it. $30,000 an event sometimes. Well, that not just that. It's like, like if you were doing business and you're killing it, you would think like, obviously their attention wouldn't be on the money, but also like, aren't they worried about forcing their, uh, their customers to have these vendors? Like, like successful, successful venues just don't do that. That That's why it, it, it like rubbed me the wrong way. And like, you guys are completely right. Like $150 for, uh, I mean, the, the risk is absolutely worth the reward. Like hopefully if we were wrong and it ends up being great, amazing. But like, I've just learned if it sounds too good to be true like that, it probably is. I've never heard of a high-end venue doing that or a venue that's making a ton of money. It just doesn't make sense. Another thing is that is would Dapo be the only photo booth vendor with their with their venue? You know, what if they're promising seven or eight different photo booth vendors the same deal because they're so quote unquote booked every day? You know, I mean, obviously Dapo can't do well unless he have more photo booths. He can't do like three or four events in that same venue in one night. Again, he can if he has more photo booths. But let's just say in this this example, he only has one photo booth and he's the number one photo booth operator in that venue how's he gonna do all those events if like three or four people ask for the photo booth that night you know what i mean just saying if you like a photo booth that's so true so they could be offering the same deal to six other photo booth operators and he's thinking that he's the special one in reality they're just collecting money off all these vendors just to you know promise them they're gonna get events yeah and like okay like why would a venue also want the pressure of forcing somebody to use Doppo as a, a photo booth vendor. And then Doppo does Doppo drops the ball that goes back on Doppo, but also the venue the, why would the, why just think as a business owner, you're charging someone a hundred dollars to use a person they'd like to use. So they end up, they end up using somebody that you're recommending or forcing them basically essentially. Right. Then the service ends up bad. Like, and, and another thing, like, and there's so many questions in my head that pop up. Another thing, what if Doppel's booked that day? What if he's booked like, I don't know, three months from now, he's booked on a Saturday. I don't know. Let's say July 27th. He's booked on Saturday, July 27th. Um, and the venue reaches out to him like, I don't know, a week before the event. Hey, we have an event for you this Saturday. He can't wait on this venue to give him events. Let's say someone reached out to him three months before that and they booked him. You know, he can't. Now he's not going to decline his customer that he got three months ago because the venue needs that commitment and they just give him a week's heads up. Hey, we have an event for you Saturday. Can you be there? So there's a lot of red flags in my head when I think about stuff like that. I'm a preferred vendor at three different venues just in my area. Okay. I have five venues that I work with so far since I've started TKR events, but I only like the three that I really work with are live around my town in my area, like maybe not even 10 miles away from each other. And they never asked me for a dollar. Matter of fact, when I first went in there, I gave all three of them free events, the ones in my area, free events, they loved me. I did exactly what Drew said. Never have they ever, the manager never asked me for a dollar. And she gets me events all the time. Yeah. 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 And look, it, it's not uncommon for venues to charge vendors for like open house shows where they have 50 people coming in that have events in the next year to see vendors. That's different, right? Um, because then people but- still have a choice and you're typically not going to be the only company in your types of service, but like, I don't know, man. It just sounds really, really fishy. I don't know. I mean, that's all I had to say about it. I don't know if you guys have anything else that you want to bring up about this this topic, but hopefully, you know, some people can, I don't know. If you guys are watching this, let us know in the comments. Would you take it? Would you? Would it be a red flag? Let us know what you think down below. Hey, let so, case in, you know, if it's only a three-month commitment, he loses $150. The good thing out of it, he could make $1,500 out of it. Who knows? So 
just give it a shot if you feel like it's in your heart. You have to have that gut feeling to take it or leave it. But I don't know. I told him to try to sweet talk him to a month. I was like, dude, just try to sweet talk him to a month. I mean, I'll give you fifty dollars. I I've lost fifty dollars in ads before that didn't give me any revenue. Like fifty dollars don't hurt. Yeah. But see, I, I had a similar situation, not a similar situation, but something not uh, to Dabo. Drew, do you remember when we were doing uh, when Hans wasn't on the podcast a few podcasts ago, and I showed you that like magazine yeah. that they put like your ad on there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I had called them, and I'm I'm gonna do it. But he he was trying to sweet talk sweet talk me saying it's four hundred and fifty dollars a month, but you have to commit to four months. And I was like, "That's I'm, I'm I can't do that, man." And I'm like four hundred fifty times four. That's like well over a thousand dollars to do this. And I and I just like Han said it, I sweet talked him to one month. I was like, "Let me do one month and see how it goes. If I like it and if I get events off of this, I promise you, I'll commit to the other three or four months." And he's like. Oh, Deal. So I got one month on him. He's actually they're printing it. They're gonna have everything out for May. So I'm excited to finally have my thing on there. You know, because they give it out to all these towns around my area. So, but I, I just how Han said, I sweet talked him down. So I can't do 450 for four months. You know, I ha- let me do one month, see how it works, and we go from there. Yeah, I do want to just say one more thing. I just bro, I agree with everything you guys said, but my concern isn't the money. It's completely worth the 150. But my concern is that. <laughs> I just feel like he's going to put himself in a situation if something does go wrong where it's going to be a big issue, a big, big issue, because it's not about the money here. Because I I tried telling him the nicest way possible. But again, just imagine he does an event. Something goes wrong. Right. His printer's not working. What happens when they want a refund and he says no? Is it on the venues end? There's a lot of questions. To also, this you gotta, we also have to rem- rem- remind, rem- rem- uh, just realize if the customer has a bad experience, the venue is also going to hear about it too, because the, it's the venue that kind of forced them to do it. So to me, I just feel like it's just an opportunity for your reputation. Um, I don't know, man. My, it, I've learned in this business, you guys like to trust your gut. And my gut was just saying, don't do it. I mean, if there was no, if there, if it was like a monthly thing, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I hope we're not. Or I hope we're not talking about this too, too much. But, but, um, but yeah, I do have a. a... It does get us, you know, and that's the great thing about being on a podcast and talking about this. This is a like almost like a heated discussion, but it's a controversial discussion, and it's something that needed to be brought up somewhere on a podcast. So future people later on, people who are watching this, who are going to be photo booth owners, who are our photo booth owners, they hear this. This is an experience that they could get firsthand before even getting offered something like that. So I, I love this. I love how we're talking about this and we're putting it out there because we're giving people the guidance. Should you or should you not take it? You know what I mean? It's just a yes or no thing. Yeah. So my answer is no. Tyler, yours was no. Hans, is yours is yours yes? No. Is yours yes, no. but only for one month? Well, I I, I if I remember messaging, I'll tell him like, look, I personally wouldn't do it. But if you are going to do it, because he was very curious and he, it seemed like he didn't want to take no for an answer. I told him, like, D- don't commit for more than a month. Like, definitely don't. And uh, he says he was going to try to like sweet talk them. I was like, well, at least that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I would even I would even tell him, look, I would even tell the venue, like, why not? Instead of me doing 50 bucks a month, how about I give you 50 dollars every time we have an event? There's no pressure on eat or yeah, on $50. dollars, but he, still, he, still- I like I, I like his response. He said he was really open minded to it. And he goes, "Look, if I if I do it for three months and only get one event, that's I'm still making good money. So at least he's calculating his risk there. But um, we do have some big announcement, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed anything, um, you know, anything that's popping out. We do now officially have. Schmerch, Schmerch. I almost called it Schmerch. We have merch. You guys can get your shirts and some other things. Um, but we do. We have a quick commercial. I think we have Hans has something to tell you guys about the merch. So let's roll that clip now. What's up, guys? This is Hans from PBU University 101, man. Oh my God. I'm excited to tell you guys this has been in the making for a while. We've been pushing it back, polishing it for you guys, but I'm happy to announce. That we now have merch for you guys. If you guys want to support us, if you guys listen to it on your car and you just, you know, got like a couple of bucks to spare and you want to represent, go and get some merch, man. It will mean the world to us for you guys to support us, man. We we just do this for fun for you guys, man. This is not 
paid content you guys get to listen to us you know and we almost have 24 hours worth of content for you guys of just this podcast so it would mean the world to us if you could go to our website and get some merch also if you guys buy merch um let's just do this for the first maybe three months we'll see how it goes you order anything you will get producer credit on the podcast so at the end of the podcast you will get your name under the producer because you are ordering merch that helps the podcast that gives us more incentives to to keep doing the podcast so you are considered a producer officially if you have an imdb you can write photo booth 101 producer on there if you order your merch so that was this has been in the works we've been trying to get tyler to get one of the shirts from the store um maybe <laughs> maybe on maybe we throw a, co- a coat rack shirt on the merch on the website <laughs> coat rack. right i'll buy that it'll be, a co- it'll be a coat rack that says tyler's fave <laughs> if you guys want some coat rack merch put it in the this put it in the comments say i want coat rack merch and we will put it we, i'll do it i don't care we'll make a coat rack shirt if you want to rock the coat rack for tkr <laughs> i'm down for that i love it man i love it so uh we had some uh some comments right uh hans on the last video that that we're gonna get some uh, answers to yes sir let Do me pull it. up right now but uh we, one of the questions that i saw was on drop off do you leave your ipad powered on and the panel locked so it can't be removed from the tower and th- this is from ellen hodges 3931 thank you for the question hmm. so i mean yes i mean that's a simple answer like i would definitely not leave it you know being able to be opened um some people do get concerned like oh i've lost my keys and we've actually seen that on the chat on the on the pbu chat or uh photo booth 101 chat that uh you know people are like oh my god i lost the keys first of all like why don't you make copies <laughs> second of all like dude, i remember i lost one key and i was down to one key and i texted drew right away i was like dude i need a key whatever like i i have a because i always have backups to backups to backups like that's just me um and I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not like someone that's negative and, you know, everything is going to go wrong. But I just I like to be ready. But uh, yes, I would lock it. I don't know if, wh- why would you wouldn't lock it. I mean, I know that you might be scared that if you lose the keys, but just have spares. I don't know. Definitely. 100 percent. Yeah. Well, for, for for some of the booths, you need a special key. So mm-hmm. you can't make copies, but you get two copies of each key when you get the booth. We have extra ones for sale if you want to buy the extra ones just to have. But um, part of that question too was with power, right? Do you keep your iPad your iPad plugged in, or is it just about the lock? Um, let me look at it again. Uh, with your iPad powered on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's part of the question, but this is something. Believe it or not, I get asked every single day: is do you keep your iPad charging while during an event? Always, you guys. I don't care if it's a 30 minute event or an hour, we always keep it plugged in because you have to remember if you're using your iPad, you're for a lot of a, a ton of time, right? You're as time goes on, that battery is slowly going to hold a less charge. It's, it's just the way batteries are right. Also, if you get booked for two hours and you're like, yeah, my iPad can power on for three hours. What happens if they want to extend two more extra hours, three more extra hours, especially if you're not there, you're going to have to come back. And it's just, look, it's as easy as this. When you have your booth in, plug it in, plug it in. And a, a, a little hack here too, with my photo booth, I will never power the iPad on when um, I have an event to turn it on. I force myself to get into the habit of, only allowing the iPad to turn on when I connect it to power. If that makes any sense. It's a little, it's a little hack I had in my brain because back in the day I was in the habit of turning it on. And then sometimes I would actually forget to put the power thing in or make sure that all the cables are there. So if you didn't know your iPad automatically turns on as soon as you put it into uh, the power. So another, another hack that I heard from someone who works for Apple. Okay. Someone I know who worked for Apple, I went to school with. It's actually healthy, believe it or not. It's actually healthy to let your iPad or phone, anything Apple related, die because you have to get the, the, it's a computer. At the end of the day, it's a computer. You have to get, you know, let the computer, the chip get used to dying and being turned back on and off and on and off. So what Drew said is true. Keep it powered in 
But if you, when you leave and go home and leave for the night and bring it back home, take the take it out, like take the power thing out, let it die. You know, if you don't have an event until that next Saturday, the following Saturday, let it die for the week, you know, for a couple of days. And then maybe midweek Wednesday, plug it back in and charge it back up. It's healthy for the for the computer to die, you know, be booted back up. You know, it's good. That's what I heard for someone who works for Apple. Let mm -hmm. your like because if you keep it, let's say you buy a brand new, right? And you keep it charged, right? And you always have it charged, 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 and it never dies. Your iPad will not last as long as if you let it die frequently. That's what's again, this is coming from someone who's a tech support guy at Apple. You know, if you let your stuff die, your MacBook, iPad, Apple Watch, let it let them die because it'll live longer. Your iPad, your whatever, anything Apple really will live longer. And mo probably most goes the same for the tablets for Android and stuff like that. Let your let, you know, let your computers die. I was like, don't make sense. But I'm like, OK, you, you're the tech guy, not me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, too, also important to remember, too, is if, you know, let's just say you're, you guys are ever in a situation to where you don't have your iPad charger or it's not being plugged in. You have to also take in, in account, too, right? How much is the booth being used? Are you doing video recording on it? Because if you're doing video clips, the battery is going to drain faster. So it's really hard to gauge how much time you're going to get out of a battery, right? Not to mention too, like, is the brightness all the way up? You know, um, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So like, there's really no excuse to be like, no, I'm I'm not going to charge it. It should like, I, am I alone here on this? You guys agree with me? Always charge in? Yeah, I always charge it. Um, I do it differently now. Um, just, just from Tal and Air that I've been to uh, events now, um, when people trip and then they move a cord around or whatever, um, and especially if it's a drop off, you know, they trip and they don't say anything or they just connect it real quick, but they don't know what they disconnected from. Cause I hide my, my cords in a, in a cord organizer, like a box. So sometimes they don't go in there and check. They just plug the, whatever they disconnected. So what I do now, um, feel free to take this tip. Um, I buy like those little power banks, but I buy a good one an anchor one anchor is a really good company. Um, that's who I trust. And, uh, I plug it in and leave it inside the tower. So if they ever end up tripping and the and the lights of the photo booth turn off and then when they connect it back on, you know, they turn back on. Um, but they didn't realize that they had they had disconnected like the iPad if it was connected as well to the thing, then they're, they're not gonna know that it's not charging anymore. So what I do now is leave that power bank inside and it's charging. So even if someone trips, that power bank is separate. So it's always powering up the 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 iPad. So, so the, power bank, the power bank lasts the whole event. That's how yeah. strong it is. Yeah, it lasts uh mm -hmm. on full brightness, um, boomerang, GIF, everything enabled and everything. Um, it lasts six hours. Which wow. is I mean, I mean, what do you need more than six hours? If you if you are, you better be charging for it. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. a link in the bio, man. That's pretty cool. Damn, yeah, just smart. get an anchor one, dude. Anchor anchor is really good with their 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 power banks. Shout out to anchor, but Man, I'm, see, I learn stuff every day. I've never even thought of that. Like, I've never, you know, too, it's, it's funny you mentioned that, too, because we always keep the power, the iPads fully charged when we get there, especially for, for drop-offs, because sometimes the party may end at 12 and they'll, like, unplug the booth because the party's over and they want to turn off the light. But there will be times where they unplug it, but they start using it again 30 minutes later. Maybe they, they, they're shutting the party down in, like, a backyard party or whatever. Um, it's closed early and they start packing up, but sometimes they'll continue to use the booth. So maybe, maybe for those people, we can start doing the battery pack thing. That's, that's super smart, man. Yeah. I leave it. I leave it in the in the thing and yeah, it lasts six hours. And what's cool is that the thing where you say they're done and then you come and they did turn everything off is going to keep the battery, the iPad uh, powered on. And so when you come in, you know, you got to make it a habit of like did all my, did all my pictures and all my, you know, boomerang sent if they didn't, guess what like you know because your your ipad's on but if, if if you let it die if they disconnect it and they let it die you're not going to know if it's sent or not until you get home hmm. so love it i don't worry about it because my photo booth is different i have to i literally unscrew mine to get the ipad out so it's stuck in there it's staying in there no well that's what i mean but you could still get that cord yeah. and run down the, and put it in the power yeah still lift it up and unplug it yeah but i don't actually take my ipad out of my phone i don't either no, I don't. You don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what booth you have. It, you can apply it to like any, any, any photo booth. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. and then another thing too, a big, a big thing too. And I always send out emails 
Well, not when we first started, but but like uh, now I'm always emailing people that get like a uh, Digibooth. Uh, don't use a USB on the back of the ring light. The light has the USB, but it's not meant for that. Like if you read the back, it it'll tell you that not tell you, but like the the it'll slow charge your iPad. Yeah. And another thing too, like there's other photo booth companies too, not even just the booths that we sell. Some of them that have have a, a connection for your iPad. But I personally think the best way to go is to actually use a certified Apple power power block. Um, I don't know, man. That's just my own opinion. Um, but damn, man, I'm super stoked, Hans. You got to send me the link for that that uh, that thing you use. I'm, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna it's, a, it's a little power bank, man. And with your iPad fully charged and that power bank together, six hours, bro, easily. Yeah. And that's full brightness, boomerang, GIF, everything enabled, and everything. Yeah, no, I think I might include it for our uh, our pickups. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we have another question. So this is from DJ Rezone seventy five twenty four. He asked, uh, "So a hundred dollar deposit that you lock in the date different from fifty percent for the photo booth? I don't really understand it, but I'm I'm assuming that because Drew likes to say that you know you will charge fifty percent if you're barely starting." to get that revenue so you can start buying stuff for your for your business which is really good a good tip uh if you can start charging that 50 percent retainer um or a hundred dollars um now that i have all my equipment now i i, I could get away with charging a hundred dollars um retainer fifty dollars retainers you know that's how much i, I charge fifty dollar retainer for my drop-offs because you know it's, it's it's a lower package so i'll be like oh fifty dollars you locked in um i could get away with that um but I guess he's asking, is that a, a different? So yeah, I guess I do charge different. If it's like a print, I'll usually ask for, you know, hundred dollars, maybe more, for depending on what package they get. And then for the drop off, I charge less. But I mean, that's your business. Do what you want. But I mean, also listen to advice that you want to get revenue coming in to buy your stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Say I, I charge. I just charge a hundred dollars. In the beginning, like you know, Drew was saying. I was doing a little bit more. Maybe if it was a five hundred dollar event, I was charging like two fifty deposit, like draw, just like so build my money back up faster. But I think the question that he was asking, because I read it before, was like, do you take the hundred dollar deposit and then still ask for fifty percent? Like I think he was saying, do you take both at the same time? That's how I was reading the question. Mm. That would be two deposits. So I, I don't think so. The hundred dollar retainer and then still take fifty percent more after that, or maybe yeah. asking for a retainer that's, 50% that's, that's, and then like a hundred dollar like damage deposit like a like a refundable 100 percent. i mean a hundred dollars like if there's no damage he gives a hundred dollars back maybe i don't know yeah that question hey, was if, if he's if, hey, brother if you're watching this video uh yeah, comment let again us know, let us know what you actually meant <laughs> proofread your question please because I, I gotta know now it's gonna bug me all confused did we, help, <laughs> did we help him or not <laughs> i think we made it worse <laughs> oh he's gonna He's going to ask like three more questions on top of that question. I mean, I'm all about it, man, but now I'm confused. <laughs> man. Um, so, man, I do want to shift it, uh, the podcast here, and just kind of just, just have a talk with the boys, just some some stuff that was really cool that had happened. We had an, uh, an event about a couple weeks ago, this place called uh, the Glass Slipper Palace venue in L.A., um calling i'm gonna call call the owner tomorrow but he just came up to us well we started chatting right and turns out he's from the same city i'm from in la puente um and then um we're just chatting and i'm like talking about the venue and you guys it was honestly one of the most beautiful it was one of the most unique e venues i've ever seen very uh victorian-esque um classy elegant little tiny venue two floors and the whole thing is just kind of like upscale but what was true what was crazy you guys is he um we're talking and then i told the guy i was like you know oh la puente and you know i have a big one of my life goals is to be the mayor of la puente when i get older and um i told him that and he goes yeah he just started laughing and he goes my brother is currently the mayor of la puente right now and i was like Damn. what i was like so that That's that blew easy. my mind but also, too, I want to to just let you guys know and announce is um, some big, big news for us. Me personally, um, we're in the works to purchase about over 10, 10 acres in North Carolina to start building out our venue. Oh, man. Yeah. 
So mm-hmm. I'm going to doc, we're documenting the whole process. We're going to do more of like a, a affordable barn style venue. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on it. Like um, we're probably going to buy some, some plane tickets soon to go out in North Carolina and then um, just start new more research, look at some lands and, and we're going to be pulling that trigger in the next three months. That's amazing. You'll be surprised, man. You, you, you guys, there's a lot of um, spots out there where you can get like 10 acres for like $70,000, which is insane. If you think about it, like the space. And um, one thing I had to realize that I was being real cheap. I was like, what if we buy just two acres? But my, my friend, he was just like telling me, he goes, you have to have a lot of space because if you have a small space and then someone buys the land next to you and they end up having like a farm or roosters, that's going to ruin the venue. So I don't know. I, I just wanted to hop on here and tell you guys, just get your reaction. Um, that's a congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to visit it when you're done. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not only nine hours away from there to maybe like an hour and a half flight. So I'm well, Tyler, if you want to be um, our photo booth vendor, it's just 50 bucks a month. <laughs> uh, say a two, a two month. You have to do it for two months though. And I have I'll, to, I'll get you a deal. Let me guess. My prop, ta- my prop table has to have a coat rack, right? <laughs> no, there are coat, two coat racks, mandatory. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, look, my whole photo booth journey brought me to the the conclusion that the money is at the venue. The venues are the ones killing it. They're killing it. You know, most of the time, and I'm like looking, I'm like, this guy has a at this place a minimum. I think they're charging like eight thousand dollars for the space. The now, like, this ven- now, is this, now is this venue you're going to have, is this going to be like, you're going to hire people to run a kitchen, stuff like that, like have managers who run it for you while you're in California, or is it kind of like one of those like uh, Elks Lounge venues where like the customer has to bring their own food, you know, clean up after themselves. Like they have, you know, you guys know what the Elks Lounge is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we're we still, we're still in the works. I think at first we're going to do it more like, we're probably not going to be like a higher end venue where we have employees because once you start doing that, like it might be more of like a self-service type of type of thing, but we, we, we might work with like local, like, like companies to, to come in and make the food. But as far as having employees, bro, I don't care what business I'm in. I don't ever want to have employees. It's just not something I'm interested. It literally will take the fun out of whatever you're doing. In my opinion, that's why I like the drop-offs and, um, even for photo booth 101, I don't have any employees. It's just myself and just my wife. So we're going to try to do it as minimum as possible, but, but yeah, but, uh, so you, don't, you don't like having a boss and you don't like being a boss. True. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. Cool. I mean, look, I've learned the hard way. He, like, he you likes know? the American dollar work for him. That's what he likes to do. He likes the American dollar, the big green bill with Abraham Lincoln's face on it. Work for him. That's what he likes. Last venue. thing I want is the venue venue employees starting a union on me, man, or or, <laughs> or camping camping out with signs. They're gonna be a picket sign. We <laughs> want more money. We want more money. <laughs> but yeah, no. When we when we when we launch it, man, I, I definitely want to have you guys come out and. Oh. Uh, check it out it'll be the the grand opening yeah but there's a lot of stuff man there's a lot of stuff that goes into it there's it's gonna take a while it won't be ready until we leave california which is gonna be about three years make sure you have like a flat area no more than 10 degree like slope for mechanical bull (laughs) for sure for sure but um yeah anything else on the the discussion here you boy about you boys boys i come almost called you you boys (laughs) Nah, man. I mean, hey, you guys bullied me, so I did a a, a reel on on my best photo of Zelay and showed my face. Um, I loved it. I loved it. Oh, it got a lot of likes. So thank you. Guys. Likes, and you got a lot of likes on TikTok. You even got a lot of likes, man. Absolutely. I tell tell him he can't. He he judges himself too quick with this. I listen. I I'm I don't I don't care about being in front of the camera. I could look like a damn fool. This damn fool is making a lot of money doing this. So you know what. I don't, <laughs> Dude, no, it, but Hans, man, it, it's a pro it's a process, man. Like if you, I mean, I, I feel like I know you well enough to say that, like, maybe one of the concerns is you feel a little awkward on camera or like, you're not oh, like, you're not the best, but bro, like no one has ever been 
good at that right away. Like it, it just takes time. I mean, you can even look at Tyler's first videos, right? Like Tyler's come a long way too. Like I feel like as you keep doing it, it becomes more natural. And then like you stop thinking about the things that like you have to say. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I, I thought about that too. When I saw my videos, I was like, damn, in the beginning, I felt like I looked like I was reading off of a script. Like literally, like if I was on the news reading like, hey, guys, in today's news forecast is like I felt like I was reading off a script. Now I just go on that camera. I'm like, what's up, everyone? Tyler Rodriguez here from TKR Events. And we're here at Stephanie and Joe's wedding. We're here. Let's check out the photo book and let's go inside. Before I was like, hey, guys, Tyler Rodriguez here from TKR Events. And we're here. And I would stutter. And I'm like, oh, man, bro, but, you have swag to yourself now. Like when you're talking, got little like mouth movements like. TKR events, <laughs> little hand movements too. It's yeah, it's, yeah but it's now my, now my wife's real big on doing like this day in the life stuff. So now my Instagram reels are more like we're changing it up a little bit. We're doing like a day in the life, so they'll see us drive to the event now. Like I record myself driving to the event and then setting up and then doing the event, and then after the event, when I'm when we're done and we're on our way home, we like give like a review how the event was and stuff like that. So we're just changing some stuff up little by little. Yeah, I so feel like Tyler can make content out of anything. Like I, I, I've seen his wife just like be drinking Starbucks and like, well, now that's part of the real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let us eat our breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you. But like, look, dude, it's it's. Again, I know we keep talking about this, but like that type of content is is what people want to see. It stops. It stops looking like promotion, and it starts becoming entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, no one ever follows a business because they want to see pictures of photo booths and templates. Like they may follow you, but like, they're not going to engage with you and it's, you're not going to really make an impact unless you're entertaining people and vlogs, bro. Those vlogs are fun to watch. Tyler, I would watch the, your vlogs, even if I didn't want a photo booth or need one, or you're not even in my area. You know what I mean? Have you, have you watched some of them or no? I have two already. Bro, I, see, you see all, I, I watch, I see all your guys' stuff. Yeah, always. Yeah, so um, let's end this here. But you guys, a reminder, I know we, we talked about it earlier. Photo booth merch down in the description, you guys. Also, if you do buy a shirt, please, please, please take a photo of you repping the merch. Tag us on Instagram, photo booth 101 on Instagram. We will be reposting everybody that post their merch and um again if you want to just support the podcast um that would be a great way to do it it'll just you know that's the way to do it so again as always make sure to follow hans uh best photo booth la down there tkr events down there also if you want to buy a photo booth photo booth 101.com you guys already know but thank you we will see you next week